Hi, I'm Paul Dye. Welcome back to Kit Plains Firewall Forward, sponsored by Tempest. Today, we're going to tackle an oil change. This is one method that works. Before we go over to the airplane and start uh, making a mess of things, let's talk a little bit about oil changes. The purpose of an oil change is to get the old oil out of the engine, the new oil back in the engine, and change the filter, all without making too much of, a, of an Exxon Valdez kind of oil spill on our hangar floor. Why do we change the oil? Oil wears out. Especially with an air-cooled engine, it's really putting some temperature into that oil. It starts to, the, the, the lubrication qualities are there for a long time, but the additives can boil off. So you really need to change that oil based on time and uh, on, on engine time and calendar time. So make sure you look in your documentation and, and, and follow the recommendations of your engine manufacturer. Four-cylinder Lycomings generally have an eight-quart sump. Most people find that anything more than six quarts tends to just get dumped out the breather. So almost all of us talk about putting six quarts of oil in our engine. When it gets down to five, then we add another quart. Um, that, oh, like Oming's okay with you flying with as little as two, although I, I would never run that low. When you're going to get ready to change the oil, you need just a few simple tools. If you have uh, put a quick drain on your oil sump when you built the airplane, you don't need any tools at all to open that up. It's just going to be a push and turn, and we'll show you that when we get to it. Um, you are going to need wrenches in order to get the uh, suction screen off. You're going to need a wrench to get the oil filter off. Uh, and you're going to need uh, some cutters for the safety wire, safety wire pliers, and some safety wire to re-safety the, the oil filter. The oil filter itself, um, you'll want a new one. Make sure you get the right style because you're going to find there are two different styles depending upon the oil filter adapter that you have. The other thing you'll find about aviation oil filters is there's going to be a provision to safety wire them. The other thing to look at on the filter is the sealing surface, the gasket. Um, traditional filters for many, many years, uh, every mechanic I know takes just a dop of the old oil and just wets that down. The new Tempest filters have a, have a material that, it, that is pre-lubricated and you don't need to do that. You can just screw it right in place. When we go to screw the oil filter on, um, there are different ways to tighten it up. There's a torque spec, about 16 to 18 foot-pounds. You can either use um, the, uh, a, your regular torque wrench or you can buy one of these fancy little wrenches which, which sometimes fit in a better spot uh, that's preset just for oil, oil filters. Um, or uh, there, the old method was um, spin it on until the gasket has just contacted the surface and then go another three-quarters of a turn used to be recommended, uh, still is on some filters, and then Tempest says you can go until it's just hand snug and then go an additional quarter turn. With that, uh, why don't we head on over to the airplane and we'll show you how we do an oil change. So first thing we're going to do is drain the oil out of the engine. It's very simple on a Lycoming. You've got a sump here and, and a couple of different spots you can drain it from depending upon your sump configuration. There's a, usually a plug on each side. and most people, when they build their airplane, they put in a quick drain nowadays, and if you don't have a quick drain in yours, you might consider doing it. Especially after you've made a mess on your first oil change, you're probably going to want to put, a, put in a quick drain. The quick drain makes it simple. All you need to do is, is find a hose that's going to fit on there, a piece of, of, uh, of uh, silicone hose. This one's a little cold, a little stiff, but we put it up there on the nipple, and then find a suitable container that's going to hold at least six six, seven, eight quarts of oil, and then push up, the oil's draining. Time to go have coffee. Now, if, it, if you're going to do oil analysis, this is the time to take a sample. Matter of fact, I'm going to stop this, and we'll go ahead and do that. So, I've stopped the flow. We're going to transfer this over to the oil sample bottle, and then we'll start the flow again. This is where you can really make a mess in a hurry if you're not careful. Okay, we've stopped that. I'm going to transfer it back over to the drain bottle and one drop. Okay, with that we'll go ahead and finish draining the engine oil. And literally, you want to walk away from this for 
as long as you got half hour is fine. Um, if you've got a tail dragger, you might consider putting the tail up on a jack, raise and lower because you'll notice that this is back in a, in a corner here, um, but you've also got a back end here which is going to collect a little oil. And so if you change the tilt of the engine a little bit while you're draining, you'll get most of the oil out. So after we let this drain while we're letting it drain, we can go up top and start thinking about working on the oil filter. While we're down here, I got to point out one other thing that's going to be part of this oil change, but we're not going to do it on this engine. We're going to demonstrate it where you can see it better on the other engine. And that's the suction screen. So back here on the back of the sump, you're going to have a suction screen, which is a screen inside the sump. When the oil pump is sucking oil out of the sump, it's drawing it through that screen. It's a very coarse filter. We kind of joke that that it's going to catch anything uh, big enough to have a serial number on it. But, uh, but it is important to check that every time and you can buy a whole bag of, of, uh, of gaskets for those, pretty cheap, and, uh, and have them on hand. And then you don't have an excuse for not checking it every time you change the oil. It's a little crowded on the airplane, so we're going to use our cheater engine to show you how you, how you work on the, uh, the suction screen. So the suction screen is in the back corner of the, of the uh, sump. Some sump sits on the very bottom. And if you have a, an inverted oil system, it's going to be a little more complicated, but there's always going to be a suction screen. So the first thing you're going to do is cut off the safety wire. Make sure you save these pieces. I always like to make sure I don't have any safety wire sitting on the floor of the hangar because invariably you're either going to pick it up with a tire or you're barefoot at some point. So we take that off and then we use a 5 8 inch wrench to loosen that up. Take it off, off, spin it out, and you'll see this crush washer on here, which you need to have, uh, and you want to have a bag, a bag of those so that you don't have any excuse not to change, or not to check this screen. And here is the suction screen. You can see it's got a fairly coarse chunks of uh, or a fairly coarse screen and so you shouldn't have any chunks of metal in there if you do your engine is making big metal pieces and that's a bad thing very very simple take it out uh, give it a little rinse off in some uh, in some solvent make sure it's clean wipe it off and then uh, reinstall it with a new gasket so since this is a demo engine we'll just reuse the old gasket Screw it in, look up the torque value in the uh, Lycoming manual. Here we're just going to snug it up and then safety wire as it was done before. The oil filter on a Lycoming engine is going to be here on the back. Now there are a couple of different kind of adapters. This is the straight back adapter. It's going to come straight back off the engine. You're also going to find ones where they're at an angle sticking up this way. Um, but one thing that's kind of common about the oil filters we use, they have a, a, a little flapper valve inside that retains oil. What you don't want when you start one of these engines is to have a long period of time with no oil pressure. And so uh, if that were to drain completely at the end of every flight, you wouldn't have oil retained and, and it would take a while for oil pressure to come up. That's what it's for. But what it does is it retains oil in the filter and so when it's time to start dr uh, removing the filter, we're going to end up with oil in there that's going to that's going to drain all over the back of the engine. Most mechanics have about a 50-50 um, uh, success rate with uh, with a messless uh, oil filter change. Um, there are some techniques that you can use to try and catch that and I'll show you a couple of them. The first is to simply use a one gallon or slightly larger Ziploc bag. Take a couple of just paper towels, stuff it inside. That's so that when you end up filling this with oil, getting some oil in there, the oil uh, will be absorbed by the towels and you won't just have this big puddle of, of liquid oil. We're, we're hopefully not going to spill that much. So this is a trick that works sometimes and with some of the some of the engines that we use. You just take the bag, you, you put it underneath and what you got to do is the oil is going to leak out right here where the uh, where the filter meets the adapter. So you want to make darn sure that the bag is, is pulled forward enough and up enough to catch the oil. Um, this is one method that works uh, sometimes. So it depends on the, the exact shape of the, of the filter and then you, you want to make sure that you don't disturb it when you're doing that. The advantage to this one is that if, it, if you do get the oil filter off without spilling a lot, you can kind of 
take the oil or the filter out of here in the bag and then you kind of bag the whole mess. Okay, let's take that out of there. There's another system which uses uh, the, the puncture method. Um, first off, a lot of guys just take an ice pick or a, a, a probe and poke a hole in the filter up near the top. Once they've cut the safety wire, they unscrew the filter a half turn and put something underneath it to catch the oil and let that drain out overnight, whatever time they've got available. This system is using essentially the same idea. It has a little screw that punctures the filter. So you, you put this on with this backed out. You put it onto the filter like this. Loosen up the clamp so that it'll slide on. Slide it over the filter. And this particular airplane has ignition wires in exactly the wrong spot, but that's just something we have to deal with. We have to cut the safety wire before we can put that on. But we'd put that on, then you'd puncture it by screwing this in, rotate the filter by a half turn, and let that drain out and walk away from it. There's another method that people have been using recently that, that uh, we don't have a demonstration here. You take a piece of two inch PVC pipe, maybe inch and a half PVC pipe, you just pick it up at the, at, the, at the big box store, cut it in half lengthwise to make a trough. Take that trough and stick it in here, support it with some safety wire if you have to so that, so that it's at the right angle and underneath the gap. Now when you open up the, safe, the, uh, the, the filter, um, it'll drain into that and come down, make sure you put a bucket under there to collect the, the waste oil. Anything that works for you is good. My recommendation is make sure you got some paper towels handy or some shop towels to pick up whatever else is going to drip and leak that you missed. It just, it just happens. Um, it's hard to keep the back of your engine clean sometimes, but we really like to try. And, uh, and mostly so that you can tell if you have a real leak developing. One caution, if you're going to drain the filter by punching a hole in it, be very careful not to push so far in that you push the filter media into the center tube. Matter of fact, for this reason, Continental says not to use this method at all. The safety wire on an oil filter can be attached in numerous different places, depending upon whose adapter it is and where the holes are. Uh, so don't get too hung up on it being a particular way. Uh, get a pair of dikes, and there's always something in the way. So you gotta find a good way to get at it. I like to get the tail off of the filter if I can, because I'm gonna be spinning this filter around um, and I don't want to stab myself. Generally, you want to get the new filter on as quickly as possible after getting the old fil filter off, just because that you spill less. So we've, we've made sure that we have a clean interface and the new Tempest filters don't require any oil on that. So we're just going to line it up and spin it on to get it started. It should be nice and smooth. If anything binds, you've got something cross-threaded you want to stop. Right? So we're going to put that in place. We'll get our little handy-dandy torque wrench, oil filter torque wrench, and you can use a regular torque wrench. It's a one-inch one inch bolt. It's not a big deal, but, but when you've got the nice little tool, it's nice to have its preset. And we'll just go ahead and torque that up. There's the brake. They're not going on really tight. Okay, to safety wire the oil filter, you're just gonna find a, cut off a, a chunk of 032 safety wire. It helps to take and put just a little bit of a bend on the end, because you're gonna be fishing for the, the opening on the back of the oil filter. Now we got it fed through. It usually doesn't happen that quickly. And uh, we actually are kinda open on the back of this engine for this part of the job. Pull this through so that it's nice and equal. Make sure you've given yourself enough to play with. Give it a little bit of a crimp down here so you get a nice, nice tight beginning. And then give it a little hand twist, just the first, the first uh, twist, just to give it, keep it nice and tight. And then we'll get our safety wire pliers on it. 
once you've got that started, you can kind of guess about where you need to, the length where you're going to tie to. And there are different places on different engines to tie it to. Um, uh, in this case, we're going to go to the oil temperature sensor because it's got a nice slot and we're going to tie the two together. Otherwise, the oil temperature sensor on this engine is kind of in the way of the path of the safety wire. Once you've fed the, the uh, safety wire through your anchor point, then it's just a question of finishing it the way you do all safety wire with a nice tight twist uh, uh, per the spec, about, uh, about six to eight twists per inch. And then uh, clip it, maybe uh, three quarters of an inch out, fold it over in the middle to have about a three eighths inch tail. And you're all done. Oil changes really aren't that complicated. They're really no different than what you do on your car. You drain the oil, you remove the old filter, you put the new filter on, you put more oil in the system. Um, the, the, the thing you just have to make sure of is that in this case you have a suction screen to check and you also have to safety wire both the suction screen and the oil filter. So that's all there is to the oil change. Thanks for watching. Catch us next time on Kit Planes Firewall Forward, sponsored by Tempest. Give us some, some voice. Yep. Yeah, Omar, step out of the shot for me. All the way out. You're still in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not terrible. No, I think that could be neat. Should have gotten some oil over it. it might. That would have been a shot. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs>